Well, hello there, everyone. It's Ashley. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to be creating with Spellbinder's Large Die of the Month kit for June 2019. This kit this month is an interactive die, and it makes a really fun interactive card. So I'm going to go over the pieces that you get in the kit. You get the piece that cuts out your basic card front, and then a little piece that fits inside there. And don't worry, I'll go over what all of these do in just a minute. You then get another rectangular die that cuts out sort of like a tag type piece of cardstock. You get lots of embellishment dies, including one sentiment die that says hi, and then you get a half circle die that when cut out twice fit together to make a circle or a wreath. I wanted to show you some of the embellishment dies because you can create little bunnies with these. This one die cuts out several pieces and you can create little bunnies. There are shamrocks, there are acorns, there are snowflakes, flowers, eggs, balloons, stars. You could use this all year long for every occasion, for any occasion, and you will be all set. Let's go ahead and start die cutting. So I'm going to be using this first piece and this is the largest piece in the collection. And I'm also using a piece of pattern paper that is included in the card making kit from Spellbinders for June 2019 as well. I'm then going to take this insert piece and place it in now. Uh, you could do this separately, but I'm just going to do it now so that I know exactly where I need it. It's just easier if I can fit it right in the die where it belongs ahead of time. And then I'm going to take a piece of low tack tape and make sure that I tape these down so that when I put it through my die cutting machine, it keeps it all in the place that I need it to be. I'm going to pull that tape back onto itself, which will prevent tearing from my cardstock or my pattern paper. And this is what I get. So you'll see here that in the center, it cut out three sides, the left, the right, and the bottom, but left the top intact. And we have three score lines. So we're going to go ahead and fold those score lines. The first one on the bottom folds up so that you see the underside. The second one in the center folds in so that it's almost going underneath that cardstock or that pattern paper. And then the final one on the top folds up. And this is going to be the actual sliding mechanism that makes this into an interactive card. So we want it to be able to withstand a piece of cardstock that I'm going to end up adhering to it to be able to pull it up so that it activates and then pull it back down. And since pattern paper is a little bit of a lighter weight than say this 80 pound cardstock, I'm going to use that cardstock cut out to the exact way that I've cut the pattern paper. And then I'm going to put some double-sided tape all over it so that I can adhere my pattern paper to that cardstock. And this really is just to give it a little bit more structure. And that way, when I'm pulling the piece that activates the sliding mechanism, I'm not going to get any tearing and I don't have to worry about it not being able to hold up. So now that that is all adhered and ready to go, I'm going to start on my piece of cardstock that's actually going to activate that sliding mechanism. So I'm going to use this rectangular die with the hole punched out on top, and I'm going to cut it from this piece of baby blue uh, cardstock. And that hole there at the top is to put some ribbon or string, something in there, so that it can help you to be able to pull that piece of cardstock, again, that activates the sliding mechanism. So how I'm going to adhere this so that it does that is just by that very small tab at the bottom that we folded up in the first place. And I'm going to put a little bit of glue just on the bottom there. And that's where I'm going to adhere this piece of cardstock that we've just cut out. So I wanna line it up and make sure that it's straight and I don't want it to be off to the left or to the right, I want it to be in the center so that when I put my ribbon in that hole that's punched out of the top, it's nice and centered with my card front. Using glue when I'm doing this allows me to be able to move it a little bit to the left or to the right if I hadn't centered it uh, completely perfectly the first time, and that's why I like to use glue for adhering that piece of cardstock to the slider itself. 
So I now need to adhere this to my card front and I'm going to use double-sided tape or a tape runner for that as well. You could absolutely use foam tape, but I just like the fit a little bit better. It just feels a little bit nicer. It's a little tighter and I just feel like it would stay popped up a little bit better than if you use foam tape, but you could absolutely use foam tape and it would be a little easier to pull as well, I think. I just felt like it was a little safer with double-sided tape. So I'm going to go ahead and use some uh, gold metallic cardstock to cut out this half circle twice. And by doing that, I'm able to adhere them together to get a wreath. And to the wreath, we can adhere all of the fun little accoutrement dies that we got in the set. So I'm trying to show here, and I'm not sure how well you can see it, but there are tiny little bumps that you can see, and it's a little easier in a metallic cardstock to see, uh, but that is where you can sort of match them up and notch them up with glue. Um, that's what I'm doing here. And that way it makes a nice perfect circle. You don't go a little bit too small or too large and they fit there right on top of each other. When you actually die cut them out, you'll be able to see it, of course, better than when uh, you're watching the video. But that's a good guide to follow when you're creating this circle. And then I just put an acrylic block on top of that so it dries the way that I want it to and doesn't shift. I am not a ribbon tire and <laughs> I'm not good at making bows. So I went ahead and just tied a knot at the top of this. And then I realized after, which you might be able to see in my photos, that what I should have done was put both sides through at the same time and then looped it under so that the knot looked a lot nicer, uh, but I just didn't think about that at that time. And so now I'm going to go ahead and adhere my wreath or this circle, which is going to end up being my wreath to the card front. And I want to do that with the slider actually activated so that I know exactly where I need to adhere it. I don't want to adhere anything above that center score line because it wouldn't pop up in that case. It would end up just folding over when that slider is popped up. So as you can see here, it's popped up nicely and the wreath itself is sort of hanging up so that it makes a three dimensional, sort of like a diorama. And I'm able to push it back in for it to go flat and then pull it up easily to get that nice pop. For my decorative element, I went ahead and used some of the flower dies and leaf dies included in the kit this month. I cut them all out of white cardstock and then colored in the shades that I wanted. I used a few different shades of green for the leaves and then some yellows for the flowers and ended up leaving some white just because I thought it looked really nice like daisies and I thought it looked really good with the pink and blue. I hope that you've enjoyed the video and gotten a few ideas of how you can use this month's large die of the month kit. If you have, please give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to see much more inspiration from me in the future. Everything as always is linked in the description as well as my blog and Instagram, and I will see you again very soon. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.